What is up, guys? This is Jason over here at Cod Kill Farm, and this is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day, and I hope you have sunshine because this makes nine straight days that it has rained here at Cog Hill. Um, not counting, not counting the other gosh it i want to say this has been literally two straight months it has no doubt and it was you know sporadic rain before then but we have had basically two straight months of rain and i think 80 percent of the united states is in the same boat we are we're in this is crazy. Uh, you know, we had a wet winter last year. And and a, a really a wet year. Well, I say last year is 2019. I guess that's considered two years ago. But, you know, it was it was wet then. This is, this is insanely crazy. I honestly would not get upset if we had a drought. Seriously. I mean, in my place is... You know, we all, if you pay, if you, if you, if you follow us, you know that we are on wet ground anyways here. We're, our property is a bowl. And so it's already wet here. And so this makes it even a hundred times worse. It is awful, 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 awful here. And I just, I. I don't know, but hey, what 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 can you do? What can you do? You know, there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. So I just fuss every now and then so I can get rid of that tension, and then just 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 carry on. I mean, that's that's all you can really really do about it. There's nothing else. I mean, and but hopefully, hopefully they're saying we're getting some sunshine very soon. Gosh, I hope so. On the other hand, even even the winters are crazy. Here it is. I've cut the air condition on for two days straight. Um, but I was I was I was working on a video today. Almost finished with it. It is going to be one that a lot of people have requested, and that is uh, about predators, about livestock guardian dogs. What do I do about um, preventing predator attacks, hawks? raccoons possums coyotes foxes i get asked that a lot um i've made some comments throughout my videos about what i do but i don't like i've ever done a designated video so i was i was about 60 65 percent done with this video and it was getting late it is now almost 10 o'clock and I was like, man, it's going to take me a couple more hours to finish this video. I haven't done a podcast this week. Um, I've been crazy busy because of the holidays and because we're still working on this house that we're trying to get ready to flip and resell. And that's taken a ton of time. And I was just tired. And I said, you know what? Let's do a podcast because I can do a podcast. They're so much easier than making a YouTube video. So, yeah, I said, I'm just going to do a podcast. I have nothing planned. I don't. I really, really have nothing planned for this podcast. But I know there's a lot of people who enjoy this, and I enjoy making them. Um, but I do would like to say this. I do have something that is fixing, that, uh, that I'm fixing to do that's super exciting that I was invited to. And that was a... Um, a farm that is having hand-hewn farm come over, and I probably didn't say that right, but there they are the the uh, they're meat smiths basically, and they um pretty well known now, getting very very popular. They are um I call them disciples of Brandon over there at the Farmstead Meat Smith, who is extremely popular now and is probably. One of the most, I would guess, well-known butchers in the United States 
right now, I would say, you know, well, at least to me, he is. Um, and these guys are close behind. They're having a, they do a, they do a pig course, basically, from head to tail. And it's three days. And basically what they do is, is it starts from the keel and then through the, the, the whole process to the butchering, to, to making charcuterie and, and ham and bacon and everything. I mean, from, so, I mean, this, this is from start to finish something that I really, really wanted to do something that I really got into when we had guinea hogs here on the property. We, you know, we had bought a smokehouse. We had bought a house to turn into a butcher shop. And it just didn't work out for us for several reasons. And um, I, I plan on, I say it didn't work out for us. The My plan shifted when I got pigs. The pigs were originally kind of for us and then our farm kind of grew and now it's become more of a business than a homestead or a hobby farm and so we start we treat it like a business now and when we got guinea hogs and I'm, I'm changing the subject i'm gonna get back to the to, to what's going on but let me finish this but that is when we got guinea hogs it was just going to be for us and maybe resell the piglets to other people that wanted to register guinea hogs and it just did well it just it did work out but it didn't um it would have worked out for us but the uh it kind of shifted the the what we were doing shifted towards a resale to a restaurant and a catering service a high-end restaurant that's our biggest client now and that's the whistling table in birmingham or shindig's catering if you're ever in birmingham it's going to be a little plug here. And if you're in ever in Birmingham and you want somewhere amazing to eat lunch or dinner, please go check out the Whistling Table right down the road from UAB Hospital. Amazing food. And they support your favorite farm, Caw Kill. So please go check those guys out. But we were working with them about the, the, the pigs and the place that we have planned on taking them because pork's a different animal. Pork and beef are totally different animals when it comes to regulations and USDA and the government. Uh, you can't butcher them yourself and resell it to the public, period. Uh, it has to go to a USDA inspected facility. So we had one lined up and they went under and there's like, but like three in the whole state of Alabama. And the one we found was a four hour and 15 minute drive one way. So you can imagine, you know, what kind of trip that would be. And Mrs. Cockhill normally handles that kind of stuff because I do work a regular full time job. And I know a lot of people can't believe that, but I do work a regular full time job. And so... She usually handles that because I don't have time. I can't take the time off my job to do that because I'm only allowed so many days. So that was just too much for her. It just it just was. It was just way too much for her. And the restaurant decided it was too much for them to drive over there because they'd have to do the same thing. And so we decided to get rid of pigs. But our but we originally planned on to do pigs for us. I had a smokehouse. I had a butcher house, but our farm has kind of shifted and it's grown and turned into more of a business now. And so, you know, what started out as us having a few meat chickens for us and some uh, regular customers and us to having hogs for ourselves, we've now grown into a full-fledged, very small family farm that is that is actually turned us into a business and we're making profit now. So that's why I got rid of the pigs. Now, I've, I have talked about getting maybe one or two pigs for ourselves and butchering it myself and doing the whole thing myself. So I've gotten more interested into the butchering again. I really got into it and what really would just my dream was to take one of these courses. I have been asked by this farm who's having them host a um, 
a three-day pig course if I would come and film and document it. Um, so this this opportunity has presented itself, and so I've talked it over with Mrs. Cockhill, and I've worked it out, and I'm going to do it. Unless something comes up, you know, anything could come up. But as of right now, I'm going to do it. I'm going to film this. Um, I have really got a bunch of stuff in my head what I would like to do. But I know all that's going to change when I get there. But that is the opportunity that's presented myself. Is I'm going to film this and make some YouTube series out of it. So y'all stay tuned for that because I think it's going to be pretty awesome. And I had the opportunity... I may not have the opportunity to actually physically get in and get involved with this because I didn't pay. And the class is full, so I don't want to take anything away from somebody that did pay good money, hard-earned money to learn. I don't want to get into anybody's way at all. All I want to do is, is film and document this and show people what these guys are doing because it is so awesome because it's old school this is old school this is head to toe this is scalding and scraping this is this is not skinning this is old school vintage knives we're talking salt curing stuff with fresh herbs we're talking about the way that your grandparents grandparents did it okay this is what this is about so I'm so, so excited. I'm super nervous. Um, I'm going by myself. And honestly, I don't know any of these people. But um, I'm just so thankful for the gentleman that invited me and thought of me beyond grateful. Beyond grateful. He just has no clue. Uh, just, just so, so grateful to be a part of this because I know I'm going to learn a lot, but hopefully I can make something that will teach other people and at the same time that will promote what these guys are doing because this is awesome. What they doing is awesome. So y'all please stay tuned for that. That's probably going to take me a good little while to make, uh, I'm guessing I'm just going to get the camera out and I'm going to roll. You're talking hours upon hours of footage I'm going to, have to go through. Now, I've never done anything on this scale or anything basically like this. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit different than, than you know, me doing a vlog here on my farm. But, but you know, I'm just grateful for this opportunity. And y'all stay tuned for it because I think this is going to be pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to give y'all an update what was going on with that. Um, I was, I was talking about earlier about predators and I do have a video coming about, about predators and I do get asked a lot more than anything. And that is what do I do about hawks or, you know, we don't have, um, eagles or any type of raptor here. Uh, we do have owls, but generally I don't have any issues with owls at all because of the way I got my the uh, coop design. And so, you know, they just go inside at night and it's fully enclosed. So owls, I've never had any issues with owls whatsoever, but I do have issues with hawks. Um, the, um, I had one time. This was two years ago, or getting close to two years ago. I was running the um, the hoop style tractor, and that's what I that's what I ran, and it's very similar to what I'm doing now with a portable hoop house that's that's stationary. That's what I run now, and if you don't know what I'm doing, um, go check it out on my YouTube channel and see what we're doing. Where we're doing basically, I can try to explain it to you is is I set up a cattle panel hoop house and I put up Premier One fencing around it and the uh, the meat chickens stay in there. That's their coop. 
Um, but they come out, I open the door up and they can come out and walk around and, and scratch around and be a chicken if they want to. If bad weather comes, they want to go inside, they can. Uh, but it's, it's sort of similar to free range. It's, it's, it's kind of like free ranging on a smaller scale. Uh, but you'll find that meat chickens don't wander off very, very far from their coop or their food and water source. They're just not. They're meat chickens. They have been bred to be meat chickens. And that's what they do is being a meat chicken. So they don't wander far from your, from your coop or your, or your food source. So the, the, the area that I got them set up in is, is this, uh, it's either 100 or 120 foot of Premier One fencing. This the electric portrait netting. I wrap it around and they stay in there. And at night they go up and I shut the door. That's what I do. They don't, I don't move them every day like a tractor. Now, as for poop buildup, I get asked that is, is I put fresh hay down every other day. So, they are always on fresh, clean ground at all time. Then what happens is, is I pull this coop up, or we, we you know we process those. We pull this coop up, and typically the chickens will come around, or Peaches and Marshall, they have a job here on the farm. They'll come around, and they'll root all that hay up for me, and then we'll come in with a tractor, scoop the hay up, and put it in a compost pile and let it compost and we'll use it in the garden. And then we won't go to that spot again until a year later. We try to stay off of it for at least 12 months. That's what we're doing here. So so I was running a hoop style chicken tractor. And I had the Premier One fencing around it. And we moved this every day. This is when we were moving every day. And we had a hawk. And come to find out, we had three hawks. And they were just like rogue hawks. I mean, these these guys were just killing to be killing. This wasn't killing to be eaten. These guys were killing because they just wanted to kill something. And they killed ten meat chickens in three days. And so we pulled the Joel Salatin tractor back out, loaded everybody up in it. And we started running the Joel Salatin tractor again, and those hawks vanished. I mean, they, they went over. I think they were just young, come out of the nest, and, you know, they flew off and got their own territory now. Since then, you know, we've gone back because, you know, I particularly don't like the Joel Salatin tractor for several reasons, mainly because it doesn't fit my property. That's that's one of the main, main reasons is is I live on hills, and I got a lot of woods, and I'm running chickens through the woods. Um, I don't have acres upon acres upon acres of flat, straight pasture land that makes it ideal for a chicken tractor to be ran. We tried it for at least two years of running chicken tractors before I was fixing to pull my hair out and just quit until I had the idea of, what we're doing now. So the that was our major hawk attack right there. Now, I will say this, I do still get hawk attacks. Um a hawk and it's generally in the fall and winter months and I'm assuming just my dumb farmer education educational guessing edu- just just me thinking is that it's because it's the lack of food, you know, and those are easy targets. So they're coming in, getting them a chicken, and, you know, usually those meat chickens are too big for them to carry off, and they'll just sit there and, and get what they can and fly off. And it's during the winter months, you know, probably maybe, let's just say October to be safe, October, November, December, January, possibly February, but let's say five months there. Five months, I may lose a chicken one or two a month. Um, That may upset some people. I don't know. I have just come to terms with it that that's just Mother Nature being Mother Nature. And if I want to free range my chickens and raise them this way, I'm going to have to accept the fact that 
this is going to happen. Now, if it were to get super bad and we're talking a lot of chickens a month, then I'd have to regroup the situation and come up with some type of system to try to offset this. And possibly the first thing I probably would try would be try to run fishing line or nylon string over the top of them to try to ward them off. I don't quite for sure know if that would work or not, but I've seen people do it and that's what I would try. Um, But right now I really don't, I don't say I don't worry about them because I do worry about them because it is frustrating to go out to the uh, coop and, you know, go check on them and put hay down or I'm feeding or watering or something, you know, that we do two or three times a day and you see a dead chicken there. And especially when you're just days away from processing and that's a 25 to $30 chicken. So, That does get frustrating, but again, I'm just, I just chalk it up as, you know what, if I want to free range these guys and the same with my egg layers, if I want to free range, then there is a risk in doing that. There is a risk. Typically though, if there is a good thing to it is, is Hulk's just typically going to get one and be done. It's not like a dog or a fox or a coyote um, where they'll come in and they just may wipe you completely out. But that's what I do here for hawks. Basically, nothing. Honestly. Honestly, nothing. Um, If you guys are doing something for hawk attacks, I would love to know what you're doing. Um, because if something changes and I may have to do something, I I would love some ideas. Please leave them in the comments below. If you're you're doing any type of halt prevention or if you have eagles or some other type of predator bird in your area, I would love to know what you're doing to prevent any type of attacks there on your farm or homestead. Um, but, But stay tuned for that video. I'm almost through with it. I go into more detail and um, a lot more visual as to what we're doing here, protecting the farm. And I go into each to uh, each livestock that we're growing here, the chickens, the egg layers, the goats, the rabbits, the meat ducks, uh, everything. And so y'all stay tuned for that. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this random off the wall. Jason didn't have anything to talk about today podcast. And I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful new year. And I hope you stick around for 2019. This year is going to be more awesome than last year. Um, I'm just, just, just feel it. And uh, y'all just stay tuned and hang on because it's going to be a wild ride. Guys, we love y'all. Y'all be good.